What's up everyone and happy new year. Today I want to speak on some stories I haven't gotten around to yet that I thought were very interesting. From Baldur's Gate 3, as well as a conversation brewing surrounding PlayStation exclusive Stellar Blade and the nonsense spewing from that. As well as The Last of Us Part 2 proving that pandering doesn't equal success. But first, I just want to take a moment in this video to say that sadly one of the creators of Warhammer has passed away. His name is Brian Ansell and he was instrumental to the worldwide phenomenon of miniature figurines and the Warhammer brand. So I just wanted to say thank you to Brian Ansell and I wanted to take this moment to remember him because his work will never be forgotten. He's a legend and let's celebrate him. Okay, now let's get on with the video. There was this one story from earlier in December that I never got around to covering, but I've had it in my browser for weeks now. It's from thegamer.com and it's titled, Baldur's Gate 3 Mod Banned for Making Dame Aelin Straight. This story flew under quite a few radars, as I haven't seen it being covered that much. So, there's a website called Nexus Mods, which I've covered in the past, and they obviously host a myriad of different mods for games. Of course, since Baldur's Gate 3 is insanely popular, they have literal thousands of mods available to use for that game. One of these turns the character Dame Aelin into a man, and that did not go over well at Nexus Mods. Nexus Mods did end up responding to and removing this mod from their site by saying, We are for inclusivity, we are for diversity. If we think someone is uploading a mod on our site with the intent to deliberately be against inclusivity and or diversity, then we will take action against it. I should also state that the person who made this mod to turn Dame Aelin into Sir Aelin has also made mods to turn Will into a white character as well, and that mod has been removed too. And while I don't agree with the Will being turned white thing, we have to also remember that mods are just that, they're mods. They don't change your game as long as you don't install them. After all, other games include mods that do stupid stuff like adding Godzilla into Grand Theft Auto. And I'm sure someone out there will be offended saying it's cultural appropriation to have Godzilla in GTA. The point is that mods are designed to create specific experiences for any players that want to have it that way. And removing this mod for Dame Aelin to be a man is extra goofy since you only need to go on Nexus mods right now and you can find stuff still available, for example, like turning Gale into a woman, which transforms Gale physically into a different character model and everything else included. You could say turning Gale into a woman is just as problematic as Dame Aelin being turned straight, but it's interesting how these two mods are treated completely different. There's also another mod where Will is now Willa, a female version whose character model is also completely redesigned to be feminine. And of course, this mod is also still up on Nexus. What's interesting to me anyway is that the Dame Aelin mod doesn't even change her face or clothes or model. It just simply makes her a man, and seeing as how she's a side character who you don't even need to help if you don't want to, the inclusion of a mod like this shouldn't be that big of a deal. In my opinion, Aelin should have been a recruitable party member. I mean, she's unique looking and would have at least have been far more interesting to recruit, instead of, say, Halson or Minsk, but that's my opinion. But I do find it interesting how Nexus Mods has a very clear bias when it comes to what can exist on their website. Turning Aelin straight, of course, erases her connection to the LGBT crowd, and Nexus is very obviously pro that kind of stuff. And yet in the same vein, you could turn Gale or Will into women with new models and everything, and that's totally fine. How is turning a character straight more problematic than completely erasing and changing the entire identity down to their DNA and bone structure? It's a very bizarre case of rules for thee, but not for me is what this is. Because I can go on Nexus right now and find mods like these ones where, for example, in Skyrim, I can download a mod that makes all the children within the game able to die by my own actions. And this same mod is repeated in other games like Fallout 4, which even uses explicit photos of showing the modder gunning down rooms full of young children to show how it works. So I guess ending children via massacres or forcibly changing the genders of characters in Baldur's Gate 3 is totally fine. But turning Dame Aelin into a man or being straight is problematic. Funny how that works. When, if you use that logic against itself, the forcible change of turning Gale or Will into women is quite literally the same thing as turning Aelin into a man. There's really no argument to be had here. It's the same thing. You're taking a character that is canonically one thing, a man in Gale's case, and turning him into a woman. 
So it's very bizarre that the Aelin mod is banned, yet it's totally fine to completely change the gender, model, and voice via AI for other characters. Is it simply because Gale or Will aren't explicitly LGBT? But then again, you can pretty much romance anybody in BG3 regardless of what gender you are anyway. So this entire situation is just confusing and shows the bias of Nexus mods, and again, the fact they're willing to host mods on their site for years where you can violently end children and I don't see any articles about this or anyone outraged, seems like nobody cares that you can essentially massacre small innocent children. But if you turn a LGBT character into a heterosexual one and suddenly, it's a hate crime. It's very weird and very telling. I'm not exactly defending this modder per se that turned Aelin into a man either. Like I said, I don't agree with their mod to turn Will white, but if we're going to apply this censorship label on mods, can we at least agree that it needs to be applied equally across the board regardless of gender, identity, or politics? Otherwise, it just comes across like there's a protected group amidst the populace and it's very weird and eyebrow raising to say the least. I understand that BG3 is a huge game, I beat it myself a few months back, and there's still plenty of people playing it. I mean, Forbes had an article that released the day that I'm making this video asking the question of how can so many people still be playing BG3 months later. And as of the making of this video, BG3 has around 220,000 concurrent players right now on Steam, which is very impressive since it came out in August 2023. In my opinion, when it comes to popularity in terms of single player games anyway, I think it's safe to say that BG3 has become the next Skyrim in terms of player counts and retainability. And it's the sort of game that is very evidently giving players what they want, which is a rich world full of possibilities. And like I've said before, many westernized games these days anyway almost go out of their way to remove things that players want. One of those things being attractive female characters. You don't have to even be too active in gaming to take one look at a lot of western games and go, what the hell happened to the female character models? I've covered extensively in the past how female characters have been getting deliberately made more ugly on purpose by western game devs. Take this article from October 2023 which attempts to say that gaming is too male dominated and that it needs to be reformed in order to make way for more women in the industry, as well as deliberately making content that adverts the male gaze on purpose. Funny how these articles are always made when women are the minority in a certain profession or business, yet you never see these people making these same articles about how we need more men in female-dominated spaces. It's only ever a problem when women aren't in power, not enough male nurses or men working in the beauty industry, total silence. Not enough women in video games? Well, now we have a problem, fellas. One character that has become the center of this male gaze discussion is the main character of the upcoming PlayStation exclusive, Stellar Blade. You play as Eve, a badass sexy woman who must reclaim the Earth for humanity. And it's also a problem because Eve is way too sexy, apparently. There was this one clip from Twitter account Learning the Law where a journalist from Eurogamer complains about Stellar Blade's character design. So let's take a quick look at that. I do you think the character model was actually like very distracting in not a good way? Because like they put the camera angles chosen, it just felt like this game seems like a, a game that came out in like 002 in terms of its, you know, like character design. It's like a bit old and, and not flattering, I don't think, for a modern audience in comparison to something like Forspoken. The entire clip makes my eyes roll, especially saying that Stellar Blades Eve is 2002-like, which insinuates that games back then were very sexual and pro-male gays and that was somehow a problem. But like I've explained many times, whether these industry weirdos want to admit it or not, the truth is that the gaming audience is very evidently male-dominated, the same way the makeup industry is primarily supported by women. These aren't things to debunk or get mad about, they're simply the truth. It makes sense too, women love makeup and buy that product at a far greater rate than men do and the same can be said for video games. But unlike makeup, video games are being deliberately made these days on the western frontier anyway to not appeal to male audiences. It's the Disney Marvel paradox all over again, you're taking a male dominated brand and then forcing it to become female and you're bleeding money because of it. And by the way, using Forspoken in any form as some sort of gotcha is just moronic as hell. That game not only did poorly critically, it sold horribly too. It ended up being such a misfire, it closed down its studio. And if anything, the main character of Forspoken alienated the audience with her Marvel-esque humor. 
So when someone uses Forspoken as a positive example for anything other than what not to do when it comes to gaming, just know these people are culturally completely out of touch to say the least. Forspoken was bad dude and its existence proves chasing the modern audience never ends well. It doesn't help when people like that Eurogamer journalist says games like Stellar Blade are not made for the modern audience. These are just the words of someone who is very much engrossed in the woke, nonsensical hive mind that is gaming journalism today. Like I said before, the modern audience doesn't exist. There isn't this coveted group of millions of customers all clamoring for woke content that removes and censors anything deemed problematic. There is simply just the audience, the same people that have existed for years now. And no matter how much these people try to say otherwise, that won't change unless they somehow open a portal through dimensions and find a woke-infested alternate Earth. They just gotta deal with what they got. And the truth is that pandering to the modern audience has never worked anyway. Saints Row destroyed its studio and that game's sales were so bad the Epic Game Store ended up just giving that dog shit game away for free. And removing the male gaze, or in other games like The Last of Us for example, they quite literally just removed any playable men from it entirely. Like in Part 2, and guess what, it turns out The Last of Us Part 2 sold around 44% less than the original game. And when you compare the hard facts of sale numbers, apparently Part 2 sold around 10 million copies in total, which is impressive, sure. But when you compare it to the original, that game sold around 26 million copies. And to add to that fire, the remastered version of the original game sold 18 million units. So it's not a good look when a re-released version of the original game has almost doubled the sales of your latest entry. The answer here is simply that The Last of Us Part 1 is more popular and beloved because it isn't infested with the agenda we see so often today. It also stars a strong, competent male lead in Joel and the sequel is everything wrong with the way the industry is going currently. It stars nothing but women, the male gaze is nowhere to be found, and it even goes as far as to kill off Joel, who many players understandably loved and wanted to see more of. But instead, the sequel removed him in order to make way for girl Joel, and the way Part 2 feels and plays out is nowhere near as compelling as Part 1 in my eyes anyway. And the sales reflect that because Naughty Dog took a risk and they decided to chase the modern audience. And again, 10 million copies is still great, but it's still almost less than half of what the original sold, and that is not good no matter how you put it. And it's extra bad considering that Part 2 released when everyone was inside due to the pandemic. So you had an entire audience bored and locked in their houses, and Part 2 should have exploded in sales, but it didn't. The simple reason is because they surgically removed any trace of masculinity from the game pretty much. And the series has suffered from the death of Joel ever since. So much so that I think killing off Joel was honestly one of the worst mistakes I think I've ever seen in a franchise when it comes to stories in years. Joel should have died, maybe, in the third game giving way for Ellie to carry the torch, but doing it in the way that they did, it just ruined any momentum. And I genuinely believe that when the HBO show kills off Joel, you'll definitely see many casual viewers also abandoning the show too. The problem here stems into all facets, from Part 2 to Stellar Blade and even stuff like Baldur's Gate 3. Yes, BG3 is very pro-LGBT. However, unlike The Last of Us, it doesn't avert the male gaze. Look at Shadowheart, or Lazel. They are strong female characters that are competent and multidimensional. Valerian isn't ran by idiots, so they ensure that these characters looked beautiful and they showed some skin too. BG3 is an anomaly, however, as it managed to appease the woke crowd while also incentivizing people tired of those sorts of things too. And the reason why is that it comes down to the most important thing in game design, which is player choice. You only see as much pandering in BG3 as you allow it to show. You don't need to be beaten over the head with woke nonsense if you don't want to. You can avoid certain quests or characters or romance Shadowheart or Lazel, for example, in completely doable and fine hetero relationships. It's a big reason why the game is so popular and it's winning all the awards. Now, I doubt Stellar Blade will have any level of choice when compared to BG3, but thankfully at least the main character is attractive. And it turns out she's based on a real woman too, thanks to this Twitter account who posted a video of how the developers digitally scanned in a Korean model's face and body into the game for Eve's game model. 
The model in question's name is Shin Jae-un, and as you can see from how she looks in the character model in the game, it's proof that when a Western dev studio tells you that they don't deliberately ruin and uglify their characters, I just want you to know that they are lying to you. Just use old faithful example of Mary Jane in Spider-Man 2, who looks nothing like the model she's based on. Yet weirdly enough, when it comes to Asian-made media, this uglification doesn't exist. They just scan their attractive models into their games and it's a one-to-one -one transition. Then you have Western games like Apex Legends, which got a Final Fantasy VII collaboration, and they managed to turn attractive Japanese designs into horrific mongoloids somehow. If this one picture alone doesn't prove that these Western devs are ruining their characters' appearances on purpose, I don't know what will. Cause what the fresh hell is that dude? Come on already. And then one Twitter user sent me this image of Darkstalkers and it just perfectly encapsulates what I've been saying. Here's Morrigan in Japanese and here she is in the West. Come on dude, like come on. But I think ultimately what I think will become the new meta, hopefully anyway, is games allowing more player choice. And I think it's very evident that the industry is taking notice that the games that win big are the ones that don't force players into a box. Elden Ring won in 2022, pretty much everywhere because it didn't hold your hand and wasn't talking down to you 24-7. And Baldur's Gate 3 sweeped in 2023 because it actually felt worth your money. It didn't have ugly women infesting it and it gave players the choice to do things how they want. That's two years in a row where games that rejected a lot of what this industry does have won big. And the games that do pander like crazy, like Alan Wake 2 or The Last of Us Part 2, clearly aren't selling like they could be because they're too obsessed with the message. Stellar Blade will likely be a hit with PlayStation players and I absolutely guarantee 100% that when that game has reviews coming out for it, you will definitely have almost every reviewer complaining about how Eve is pro-male gays. Watch. I guarantee it. When that game comes out and those reviews happen, circle back to this video then. I'm telling you that those journals will be holding their bellies crying that Eve isn't a frumpy they-them goblin monster and actually looks like her model. And in terms of Baldur's Gate 3's enduring popularity and the obvious bias of Nexus mods, I'll keep my ear to that space as well. Because there's a very evident bias across the industry right now. You're either with the echo chamber, or you're casted out into the cold for disagreeing with them. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather let them all burn and stay toasty than lay in bed for even a second with these weirdos. But as always, thank you for watching, like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks to my patrons for their undying support, and have a wonderful day. Happy New Year, keep your mind clear, question the status quo, and take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next one.